Thank you for joining us to commemorate this very important day in the Polish-Jewish relations. My name is Andrzej Szydło, I'm Consul at the Consul of General of Poland in Toronto, and I am honored to be the host of tonight's evening. This celebration is organized by the Consulate General of the Republic of Poland in Toronto, represent, represented uh, not only by myself, but first and foremost by the Consul General Grzegorz Morawski. <laughs> Congregation Habonim, whose spiritual leader Rabbi Eli Rubenstein will extend his, will extend his uh, welcome in a while. Okay. And the Polish The Polish Jewish Heritage Foundation of Canada are represented tonight by its president, uh, Mr. Peter Jassen. <laughs> Our gracious thanks go to all the sponsors of this event, the Canadian Society for Yad Vashem, Canadian Friends of Pauline, the Museum of the History of Polish Jews, March of the Living, Raoul Wallenberg Center for Human Rights, the Sarah and Heim Neuberger Holocaust Education Center and Friends of Simon Wiesenthal Center for Holocaust Studies. I would like to acknowledge the presence of uh, distinguished guests. We are privileged to have with us the Ambassador of the Republic of Poland to Canada, His Excellency Martin Bosatsky. as well as the Deputy Consul General of Israel, Mrs. Irit Stopper. Now I would like to invite the host of this synagogue. Oh, excuse me. I, I missed one very important person who is here with us, the Member of Parliament for a Topical Center, Mr. Boris Kreshniewski. My apologies, sir. Now I'd like to invite the host of this synagogue, the religious leader of Congregation Habonim, Rabbi Eli Rubenstein, to extend a welcome to everybody. Rabbi Rubenstein will be joined for an ecumenical prayer by the Reverend Father Marian Hill, provincial of the Missionary Oblates of Mary Immaculate, serving the Polish diaspora in Canada. Thank you. This event was actually supposed to start at 7.30, but we started at 7.40 because Polish and Jewish time at 7.30-ish, so we're still on time. It's so much in common. So honored ambassador, consul generals, and honored guests, welcome to Congregation Hamanim, the first synagogue in Canada founded by Holocaust survivors after the war, and welcome to this very historic evening as we honor the opening of the first museum in Poland recognizing the righteous among the nations. And I want to begin by reading to you a message, a special message from Erwin Kotler from the Royal Wallenberg Center of Human Rights. He writes, I'm delighted to express the support of the Royal Wallenberg Center for Human Rights on this important occasion. Based in Montreal, the center is an international consortium of parliamentarians, scholars, jurists, human rights defenders, NGOs, and students united in the pursuit of justice in Canada and around the world. As our name suggests, we are inspired by the example of Raoul Wallenberg's humanitarian legacy one that shows us the exceptional impact a single person can affect when even one individual takes a principled stand against injustice and indifference. Tonight, I join the Jewish community and our Polish sisters and brothers in honoring Joseph and Victoria Ullman and the over 6,000 other Polish righteous among the nations who risked their lives to save Jews during the Holocaust during the Kingdom of Night, one of the darkest periods of history that humanity has ever faced. As has been said before, the righteous among the nations not only saved Jewish life in the Holocaust, they saved the very reputation of humanity. Thank you for honoring your legacy, and we all be inspired to follow in their courageous footsteps. Erwin Kotler, Chairman of the Royal Wallberg Center for Human Rights and former Canadian Minister of Justice. So that's a letter from a Royal Wallberg. <laughs> I might add that there are many museums around the world commemorating atrocities, as there should be, places like Hauschitz Birkenau State Museum, Babi Yar, memorial sites in Rwanda. But isn't it equally important for us to create sites honoring human kindness, compassion, and courage? In this vein, I would like to quote Dr. Naomi Azraeli, the CEO of the Azraeli Foundation and also a member of the synagogue, who once said, no one survived the Holocaust, 
Not a single person survived the Holocaust without the help of another. It could have been a hiding place. It could have been an extra ration. It could have been a pair of shoes. It could have even been a smile. But nobody survived the Holocaust without the help of somebody else. And it's these acts of nobility we must remember, along with the all too familiar acts of Nazi horror and cruelty, and the willing participation of their collaborators. Our young people must be given hope for the future and understand that evil was indeed resisted during the darkest of times and can still be confronted today.